Remember when they called television a vast wasteland? It's hard to argue with that description. I mean, with the rolling hills and the beautiful meadows and the gorgeous beaches out there, there's still a lot of deserts in today's media landscape. But the fact is, the media has changed in ways that no one could have expected. We're gonna find out that the year 2005 was the year the mass media died. In fact, it was murdered. And this was one of the suspects. And there will be no survivors. The mass media world has changed from delivering one message to a mass audience to an age of personalization. Customization is the key word you need to think about now. For instance, in case you were asleep during the media revolution, listen to this. eBay has 168 million users worldwide. MySpace has 40 million users. There are 23 million blogs today, and 10 million people use Craigslist to search for classified ads on the internet. If you don't know what those things mean, you probably need to be in another business. What's the connection? Each of these media platforms are internet related and they all can be customized for the individual user. For instance, on my iPod, I've got classic rock and roll. I've got bluegrass. I've got southern gospel. I have praise and worship. But I also have opera. And I've got a little Frank Sinatra. I'm not interested in what radio stations think I need because now I can create my own playlist. So what does this mean? If you're a program producer in the media, television, radio, internet, whatever, it's time to wake up to the change. We always thought we knew what the mass audience wanted, but the fact is, they're in charge now. In a 500 channel universe, change is here and choice is everywhere. Look at radio, satellite radio, internet radio. There's a lot more choice out there. And if we want to justify the audience's attention, it's time for us to get on their wavelength. Of course, you can always stick to your guns and say, well, I've got a message they need to hear. But who cares if nobody's listening? Now, if you want answers and you still want to connect with your audience, here's some things to think about. Number one, be yourself. Stop trying to be the next Billy Graham or T.D. Jakes or Joyce Meyer or Beth Moore or Joel Osteen. God has given you a calling like no one else. It's not about trying to be somebody else. It's trying to discover who you are. Michelangelo talked about making statues. He said, I don't carve statues. He said, all I do is cut away the excess stone so the angel that's inside can come out. That's what it's about. Let's discover your gifts, your passion, your calling. The world is not looking for another copy of a famous leader. The world is looking for you. Number two, be honest. Okay, sure, you're not lying or anything, but the fact is, your teaching tape or your latest book is probably not really gonna transform somebody's life, change the nation, or shake the globe. We come off a little over the top in a lot of the promotional things that we do. The cry of this generation is authenticity. That's all about being honest, being real. Sure, go ahead, sell your products, that's great. Pitch them till your heart's content. I believe that when you're real, the audience will respond. Woo, I beat that sound. Number three, understand the power of ideas. The fact is, most religious media organizations are thrilled to spend lots of money to buy media time or to buy equipment, or to pay for facilities. But when it comes to ideas and strategy, very few are willing to step up to the plate. But it's all about ideas. In 21st century media, it's all about ideas. Ideas are bigger than advertising. Ideas are bigger than programs. Ideas are bigger than sermons. Because ideas change the world. Sit back, relax, think, strategize. Understand the value of creativity and appreciate the value of ideas. Number four, who is your audience? If you make stoves, you should be famous among cooks. If you make fishing lures, you should be famous among fishermen. The fact is, you can't be all things to all people. You know what? Success isn't always about being everything to everybody. More often, success is being everything to some people. The truth is, you can't win the world. Jesus didn't win the world. What do your gifts, your talents, and more than anything, your passion say about the type of audience you could potentially reach. Let's focus on the type of audience you can reach, and chances are, it's probably not the audience you think you're reaching now. Next, 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 realize the power of perception. You may not like this, but tell you something. In a media-driven society, perception is just as important as reality. Your public perception is critical. It's not about you, it's the way you're perceived. 
I have a relative, the captain of an oil tanker. He told me that those ships are so big and so heavy, it takes them 15 miles to turn. You know what? It's just as difficult changing the perception of the public. Because remember, it's not about you. It's about how you're perceived that really matters. To discover your brand, we ask three critical questions. Number one, who are you? In other words, what makes you, you? Number two, what are your unique gifts and talents? In other words, what makes you special? And number three, what makes you different? In other words, what separates you from the pack? When we can answer those three questions, then we start to learn how to position you with the correct audience to make a real impact. Sure, a lot of people are gonna say this is all mumbo jumbo and it doesn't really matter. They have their message they're gonna deliver to the mass audience and it doesn't really, they don't really care. No matter how important your message is, if no one's listening, it doesn't matter. In the 21st century, we have to change our perception and should change the way we think about communicating to an audience. Yesterday, it was dumping the same message on a vast audience. But today, it's all about connection. The kind of connection you make with an audience that will not only inspire them, not only make them want to listen, but better, make them want to respond. Don't give your audience what you think they need. Give your audience what they never dreamed possible.